Welcome back. Yes, indeed, it's that time where we talk sports. Uh, yes, indeed, and as well, Ida Pitisai joins us next. He's a former Super Eagles player. He was between the posts, just uh, trying to see that um, what uh, Wambeli is going to be doing for us today. So, good morning, and thank you for joining us today on Sunrise Daily. Well, you know, the thing about this kind of big game is that we expect big players, big characters to step up. But the danger is that there could also be a big fall. But we don't want to think about that part. But sometimes you just have to. But it's going to be a really big one because once you're out, you can say goodbye. So tell us, Mr. Peterside, what kind of thoughts have been going through your mind about this match today? Jebali, see how scared you are. Fear <laughs> hey, It's all over you. <laughs> <laughs> but at that minute, I mean, you are, you are <laughs> who can blame me? Picture. It's called you respecting the opponent. Fear, fear, no, we are Nigeria. We are Nigeria. The gods are on our side, where you can see. We we are playing, we are playing well, we are doing well, we are scoring few goals, but we're winning, we're not considering goals. You know, in every in every um, team, there are three aspects you must look at. You look at the defense, you look at the goalkeeping, and you look at the attack. And um, considerably, we've done well. When you consider that in these three areas, we've seen Wabali come to save us. Our defense have just considered one goal in five games. And I think we scored about four goals or there about, and we're in the, in the semi-final. So uh, again, fear not. The, the, uh, I think it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm surprised you guys in the studio are not even wearing Nigerian jersey to give us some kind of. It's, it, it's under my shirt. <laughs> so um, when that time comes, <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it out. But talk to us about the mindset of those kind of players because you've been here before. So what, how is the mindset usually when you're preparing for this game, especially trying to distill all the noise and be laser focused on getting the job done, particularly at this stage? It's the hardest, the hardest period to every game is four hours to the game because what would happen early this morning, they will take what we call the walk. You just walk around the the hotel, you know, just to to fellowship with one another, just and just to calm the nerves. Uh, the tension starts when you go for lunch, because if you play in a game, you need to eat four hours for for proper digestion, four hours, five hours before um, the match, the match proper. Now after the lunch, after the lunch, what happens after the lunch? The players get into the, from the launch area, they go for pretty much, or they go to for pretty much from 11 o'clock, then you know the lineup. They tell you who will play, give you instructions from there to the dining, then from the dining to your room. Once you get to your room, that's where the pressure starts because you don't talk to anyone, you have your workman, you want to sleep, you can't sleep, your friend, your, your roommate, wants to talk to you, maybe it's not in the team. <laughs> he wants to just talk. You don't want to talk. So that's the pressure period. Once you can handle the nerves between that time and when you assemble in the bus, once you get into the bus, the pressure leaves. Immediately. The pressure leaves because as you're entering the bus, the, you start singing. The reason for those songs are just to motivate you to, to give you that war, put into that war zone, you know? Yeah. And the beauty of it, once you enter the dressing room, you see your jersey, you see your name, you know, this thing hits you, I'm representing Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, so, it's a beautiful experience. So I, I hope, are they allowed phones at any point in time between, I mean, almost at that period where you're psychologically trying to prepare? Yes, you need, the beautiful thing is to talk to families, to talk wow. to your wife, talk to your children. It comes you. So phones are allowed. Uh, but don't call an uncle that needs money or uh, <laughs> that will tell you <laughs> the danger is 
when they tell you that uh, your relative just died. Remember the case at the World Cup mm-hmm. with, um, with Mikel, you know? So when we're coming, I was in that team, we were in South Africa, as we were coming out of the dressing room to go, then a phone call came that they had just kidnapped his father. That's the danger of receiving phone calls. So most people don't take calls, they put their iPod on, put their music on, just play your favorite music and, and uh, feel the vibe from the team room. Oh, wow. You know, thank you very much for that very vivid description of what it feels like to carry the expectations of 200 million Nigerians on your shoulders, <laughs> especially when, you know, they didn't really have a lot of faith in this, in this team. Uh, but, you know, you are a man of the, of the book. And, um, you know, I think it was someone who said the race is not to the swift. And it would seem that somehow, you know, all the naysayers have been proven wrong. This is our team at the semi-finals. And I can tell you today, we're all wearing our jerseys. The jersey's in the heart. <laughs> Yeah. It's not you're, not, you're not buying it's it. You're not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> the is not. <bad. laughs> I assure you, Mr. Pritticide. Uh, but I'm wondering, you know, looking at how far we've come, we've talked about how, you know, our team, you looked at the defense, the attack, and the midfield. Um, we know that this is not, it will seem that somehow the gods of football are just looking very kindly at us. Because, yes, our defense has been really good. But not so much our attack. I mean, when you look at the fact that even an own goal got us through to this point, it doesn't look like this is something that we have really, really, really worked for. Would, would you agree with, with those who say that? No, own goals are caused by pressure. You know, when we were, when we were playing, we have this adage. They say, Potako play well about win. It used to be an adage that uh, Potako played well, but about won. The most important thing in football is to win. Get the result. You know? Nobody cares how you get the result. In 10 years from today, when they look at the stats, they won't say, oh, this person was under pressure, that person was under pressure. Or you just, you, you rely on the results. Um, Nigeria won Angola. That's all that matters. So sometimes in games, you need a little bit of luck. You need a little bit of momentum to carry. Look at Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is playing the semifinals, and trust me, they will play in the finals. So you need a little bit of luck here. You need a little momentum here. But the, the beauty of it all, and I was talking uh, yesterday, I said, when, you play for, when you're playing for Nigeria, in the player's head, a lot of people think they're thinking about Nigeria. It's not true. They're thinking about themselves. And so when you have 11 players thinking about how they can make history, how they can change the narrative and say in 20 in 2024, I, I won the Nations Cup. The people might say Nigeria won the Nations Cup, but you see, when you personalize it and bring 11 people that say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want, once they get it right and I want to be a, a winner, everything changes. So you need a little bit of luck, you need a little bit of uh, God, you need a little bit of yourself, and the combination of those things bring the victory. Look at the South African side too. They lost their first game. Don't forget. They lost their first game. Everyone wrote them off. And then um, all through, they, 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 they were second best against, uh, against Mali. Their goalkeeper was fantastic. Save four penalties. This is what carries you to a tournament. And um, we just hope that it carries, it carries us to today. It's going to be a very difficult game. Very, well, thank, very thankfully, you're watching from Port. You're going to be watching from Port Harcourt. Uh, yes. Last time we spoke to you, you are speaking to us from South Africa, and we've since seen that circular that's gone uh, viral now, talking about how Nigerians in South Africa will need to be careful in terms of how they celebrate. Should Nigeria, uh, I think it, maybe the clutch when, when, when Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria wins in South Africa, yeah. that's yeah. the Nigeria, the Nigeria yeah. in me. <laughs> Uh, but that's basically what it is. I mean, it's a very sad commentary in the sense that this is supposed to bring Africa together. These yes. games, the AFCON, is supposed to you know, blur the divides and bring everyone together regardless of whether you win or lose. What did you make of that circular when you saw it? Well, it was sent to me, and I'm quite close to the High Commissioner there. We've been talking on the community, the, you know, one of the community leaders there. You know, we're talking, this is not the first time. 
it's not the, maybe the first time we've been harassed. It's not the first time we've seen xenophobia everywhere. But there's this, there's this unwritten rivalry between these nations. Very unwritten rivalry. And this rivalry is about supremacy. Who is greater, who is bigger. It's not just in football, it's political. They hardly want to give a visa to come into the country in Nigeria. And uh, on the lighter note, their women like us more than their men. So there's this rivalry that is just beyond that is beyond football. This has happened so many times. Again, we cannot take this for granted. These things are real. There are abs- I pastor the church. I still pastor church in South Africa. Uh, by God's grace, I have a massive assembly. We, at a particular time, other South African pastors arranged to come and attack our church. About 62 people came in there and vandalized the place. So it's just, it's just an unspoken rivalry. But please, I want to beg them, forget about the the uh, the fear. I don't want our boys, our boys should please beat them. Let's we'll handle this uh, uh, threat later. Let's win the match first, okay? We, they shouldn't even read the letter and go and say we want to pity Nigerians there. Let's win them first, then we can handle the letter later. I mean, Mr. Peter said, it is a very, very serious situation. I mean, many Nigerians have been worried, you know, seeing that mm. particular circular. And it's not just about Nigerians, Nigeria winning this game. If we win, there is the fear. And if we lose, there's also the fear. Are there checks? Is there something being done? You know, at least from, you said you're, you're close to the High Commissioner. Apart from telling Nigerians not to celebrate in a way that could make people, you know, uncomfortable or upset enough to foment trouble, is there anything else being done? Yes, I think the, the, the game will be shown at the High Commission, uh, at the Embassy, and the, the one in Pretoria, and, in, uh, and the one in uh, Johannesburg. So if you want to really celebrate, come to the High Commission, uh, to the Embassy, or to the High Commission to, to watch together. There will be big screens there. And we've told most of the people, forget the pubs, don't go to the pubs. Just stay indoors, especially you and your friends can gather in your house, and uh, make as much noise as you want to make in the room. The, the, the threat is real. You know, everything we do, it's not just football, everything we do, there's this uh, um, deep-rooted hatred for, for Nigerians. We don't know where it comes from. So we've advised, we've called our friends and say, hey, Meluda, Meluda, this. we've not won the trophy. The rivalry is unbelievable. The, the truth about it is that, now nah, I say is that, if we win, they will attack us. If they win, they will attack us. Mm-hmm. So we just pray that it's, it's minimal. It is not football. It is xenophobia. That's what it is. Stick with you. Say, stay with you on what you said earlier. When you said, let's, let's leave the matter of um, the letters and all of that aside for now. But let me also confess, as you and Chamberlain were bantering, my BP was already going up. So actually, <laughs> I can't tell you. I I, I can't hear you. I, I, I hope something will be done. That. Sorry, what did you say? I didn't hear that. I said I, I'm not even worried about you because you will not even watch. You will not even watch. You've said that before. Okay, but you know, there is. I don't know whether to say that this is a good thing or a bad thing, and it is something that growing up. I knew with uh, the Brazilian team, teamwork. Mm. They hardly had uh, strikers, so to speak, back in time. They were not as prominent. It was just the Brazilian team. Once you were going to face the Brazilian team, you had a problem in your head. And I think that's the same thing that the South African coach is saying, that, look, they don't have stars like that, but they have a good team. And he's saying that they're banking on teamwork to defeat the Super Eagles. Does that give you any concern? Yes. Um, um, eight of the players, eight of the regular players, play for, for Memorandi Sundowns. And uh, these are, they have been African champions twice already. They've won the South African League back to back four times in a row. So they have a, a team. I remember Mosebe, the president of CAF, owns um, Memorandi Sundowns. But the good thing about them, they have a lot of money. They've been playing together. So that's what they've done. They've just moved that team into the national team and they're producing for them. Um, 
we have something they don't have. What we have is that we can muscle them. We have the ability to muscle them. But we have individual, more individual gifted players, which if we utilize that, then we should win. Hmm. Well, st talking about those players that you just talked about now, you know, a number of people have expressed a bit of concern, particularly about what I can call our star boy, Osime, uh, that in most yes. cases in this particular tournament, he's not really been able to show uh, the stuff he's made of, only that he has been very, very instrumental to quite a number of uh, victories that we have uh, scored. Is that something that bothers you? That, that because the same thing could happen here. I mean, we, you are saying that we, should, we would muscle them, but it would seem like throughout this uh, tournament so far, uh, some of our key players, like Osime, for instance, has been fairly muscled. No, he's been the star of the tournament. Now, mm. Because he's not scoring does not mean he's not impactful. You know, of his course, impact is so much felt. Mm. Yes, we saw the last game, and even while he was falling, he was the one that gave the pass. So he'd be very impactful. If you don't feel Osime, then you're in trouble. You know, we just pray that he gets the luck of hitting the net. That's what we expect. If he hits the net, will hit two or three times. He's done so well for the team. He's been our best player so far. So he's been very impactful. Sometimes things like this happen in tournaments. When you look at this look man that is scoring the goals, while in Nigeria, no one, no one even wanted him to be in the team. So we're hoping that uh, uh, his impact to be felt and the gods will shine on him and he'll begin to score goals. I'm, I'm very happy with what you said earlier about, um, I mean, when Marco was excited about it, and I, I, I was as well when you mentioned it, that, you know, the, what's going on in the mind of the player, they also want to write their names in gold, they want to make history and all of that. Um, but in terms of the mood, what should Nigerians be expecting? And what would you be telling the people, the, the handlers of the Eagles right now, in order for them not to be disturbed or deterred by anything? A few hours down the line, I've, yes, but what, what, would you be, what would be your counsel? It, yes, I've always, I've always had a challenge of a lot of uh, government officials uh, um, uh, invading their space and making uh, unnecessary promises. You know, sometimes it just... You know, confuses the players. I remember again. I still say it. we were in the dressing room, and um, if I would mention his name, I, I didn't know that came into our into our dressing room and said, uh, "If you win this game, I give you a million dollars." Even me, I didn't watch the match. I was concentrating on the million dollars that we are supposed to be shared because uh, we were already calculating how many, how much each player will get. Just let them play. You know, if there's any instruction pass it to um, the coaches. And after the game, this night after we've won, you cannot gather them and give them whatever you want to give to them. You know, all the mm. government officials will be there. It, sometimes it can be can be very noisy. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, I, I know that some time ago when you mentioned this kind of scenario, that there were too many officials. Let these people focus and concentrate. It sent yeah. shivers down people's spines and at some point it didn't end well. But maybe talk us through this part, using yourself as an example while you were at this stage going for this kind of match. Now, do you play for the country? Do you play for yourself or for glory? So and in, in all of that scale of preference, which one usually runs topmost that will motivate the players or you the most, that, that motivated you, for instance, the most when you were going into this kind of match? Um. You play for yourself first. Oh. Because the first game I played, I called my father and I said, hey, your son is in goal for Nigeria. You know, and my father could not sleep. Oh, hey, my son is playing for Nigeria. It's you first. Because once you are ready, now when you come in, when the team meets, it becomes Nigeria. But for yourself, you need to psych yourself because you can damage your career. You can end your career you can end your, your, your national team career in one game. You saw what happened to Ozo. One game destroys you. So you have to first prepare yourself and say, God help me here. You know, most players even fast prepare themselves mentally, physically. And once you get you right, and individuals get themselves right, 
That's a collective team. Now you see that when they hold that hand together and begin to pray and hold, then then it becomes Nigeria. But you must prepare you because remember, ten years from today, ten years from today, you can mention the team, but the glory that has come out from your participation becomes your individual achievement. So somebody can say, Ah, JJ this, hey, Amunike this. Why? Nobody saying Nigeria this at that time. So it's important you play for yourself when we, when you gather. And again, I want to say this that will shock a lot of people. All this uh, uh, tension, all these people are saying, no, they are not even hearing you. You good. know, ah, they are. Eh? I think it's good, so they can focus. Yes, yes, very good, very good. You you switch off. If you don't switch off, you die. You understand? You you kill yourself. If you don't switch off, you hear that this goalkeeper's leg is too big. This goalkeeper's hair is tatter. It's good to us, uh, you know, they just tell you, especially now in the time of social media. Yeah. They yab you, yab you, yab your father and your mother. You, you understand? So you just keep away from that noise and uh, focus on football. Mm. So one more thing. Now, when you've watched, uh, as we've watched the team play over time, did you see the tactical news? Or for instance, did you see anything whatsoever that told you, wow, this is off the training pitch. We've been trying some things, and hopefully <coughs> this time we will see a similar narrative. Just pull something from nowhere to surprise the lot. I think Pesero, give it to him, has changed how we play. We all know we play two, with two wingers, we play midfielders and four defenders. He has changed everything. Look at how he's playing. He's playing with the right feedback. I, I know goes up and down this way. And then Saidu, I think that's his name, on the left side, what he has done that has baffled a lot of people is that the five he's played, he has brought Basim from the left side. And why is he doing this? And I think it's a great tactic. That's why we've not considered goals. I think he was worried about our defense. And he tweeted a little bit that has paid off tremendously. That every time we, every time we lose the ball, the three clicking into the middle and they expect Aina to trickle down and expect this shy to, to trickle down. Then we have five of them. All they do, they leave Oyeka in the middle. You see, and they leave Oyeka in that middle and the, uh, the look man doesn't come back. So he stays permanently there just like Arsenal used to play. Knowing that if there is any uh, breakaway, they can send the ball to, to uh, uh, send the ball to Look, man, because he has speed and he favors the team. It's a tactic that is played in Europe for over the years. And But the Nigerian system, we wanted to stay with our 1994 system where you have two yeah. wingers, Finidio on the right and Monica on the left. But he has brought a lot of changes which we are watching and I think it's working for him and Nigeria. Okay. So, uh, also happy for Ademola Lukman. So, if they think they can mark him out, Osima is there. You think they can pull two people on those guys? Moses Simon can do a job. But if they think, uh, let me not read out all our tactics. But uh, well, I will ask you uh, at this point. Two questions, two questions, two questions is the card. Fantastic. And then Kelechi also is there. So we yes. have, we could pull something here. All these extra coaches. <laughs> <laughs> coaches. No, Watching some of the uh, coaches. <laughs> That's our way to enjoy the game. So we'll be watching. We'll be watching this yeah. evening. So Nigerians, celebrate wherever you are. Uh, so be happy about the match. Watch it. Be happy. It's your country. Be proud of your country. Support your country wherever you are. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. That, that's what matters. So Mr. Peterside, thank you for your time this morning. I think we'll win. I think we'll win too. Uh. Yeah, fantastic. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. On that positive note, and we'll take that into watching the game as well. So there you go. That is the show today. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow and hopefully smiling from ear to ear after tonight, to this evening's match. I'm Chamberlain so ahead of our hopefully victory. Goodbye. Indeed, all the best to our team. We wish them the very best. Thank you for watching today. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Have a positive energy. Energy will be everything today as we watch this game. I want to thank everyone for watching. I am Kayla Magua. And if the Maka Chikweze, Chamberlain is there. Oh, oh sorry, it's an actor. It's an uncle. Amaya Makine, have a wonderful rest of your day.